So today the plan is to try to get the front brake line on the RD replaced. I'll go into the details of why I'm doing that and try to share some, some true but sometimes funny stories of little pitfalls you can avoid when you're going to replace a brake line. It's a relatively simple job. It's not real complicated. There's a lot of different ways to do it. The only way I can really show is the simple old-fashioned way that that I've been using for my whole life, both on uh, every bike that's here. Actually, we've done brake work on. So anyway, I hope there's some good information on this video, and if you have a different way of doing it, please share it on YouTube. I'd like to watch it too. Now on the brakes, like the R1 that have modern braking systems, and I mean this bike has incredibly good brakes, the, the braided steel brake lines made the handle, the lever, whatever you want to call it, just a little bit more predictable, a little stiffer, and you have a little bit less flex in the hoses. One of the steps still to be done on our 650 Ninja project, we still haven't gotten, made a final decision on the brake lines. That's one of the final steps. On the Kawasaki, I've already got some of the brake lines replaced, but not all of them. But we're going to start working on that very, very soon. In fact, we're going to start today with the RD. That's the easiest one. So there are a few pitfalls to think about when you're going to replace a brake line. And the biggest pitfall, the number one thing you can do wrong to make it difficult, and you can see it's something I've done, is I've made, when I measured the brake line, I made it too short, and there's not enough clearance. So what happens, it's constantly rubbing on things. And even though it isn't, it still has a little bit of flex in it, it's still, it would be better if that were an inch shorter. So what I've done, of course, is I've measured that, and you always measure end to end when you order brake lines. I've ordered them off Amazon, they're about $12 a piece, and replacing it, relatively easy job. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing you can do to make a problem is not protect the paint on a bike and drip some brake fluid on it. Brake fluid, think of it as paint remover and you're not far gone. So again, I ordered these from Amazon. I've got one that's a little bit longer, one that's a little bit shorter. I was hoping I could put whichever one is going to give me the right clearance. That's why I ordered two of them. I've also got the one for the Ninja, which is a relatively simple replacement. But this one, I'm going to, one is 800 millimeters, one 750. I want to have a little bit more clearance around where this brake line winds its way around the speedometers. I don't want it flapping out in the breeze, and I don't want it under tension. When the forks are fully extended, I don't want it to have any tension and be like a violin string. So step one, one of the mistakes you can make is you measure the brake line and you don't take into account the 90 degree bend. Now these that I just bought don't have the 90 degree bend, so I basically added an inch. I don't know if that's going to work, that's why I ordered one that's an inch longer and one that's basically two inches longer. Also, you always want to take into account wherever it is, is going to rub on something, it, eventually, from just from the forks going up and down, it's going to wear, wear the coating off. And you don't want to have any kinks like I have in here. And of course, this brake line worked for eight years already. It hasn't been a problem. It never failed. But what I'm trying to do is now is just make it an upgrade. And the biggest thing of all, you upgrade it before it fails. So before I get started, I thought I'd share, I have plenty of these stories too, but the, the most obvious one here. I had bought the bike with Luciano. We went down to South Jersey and picked it up. But I had never really taken a real ride on it, a real ride, where you, you're going fast and using the brakes. Well, here's what happened, and, and this may happen to you. It could happen to the front brake. It could happen to the back brake. It could happen either way. I was going up Route 17, probably 75, 80 miles an hour in a fast lane. The back brake just locked up, locked the back wheel up. I Luckily, because I'm a, I'm a two-stroke, I'm used to grabbing the clutch lever and <laughs> coming to a stop. I say that like it's funny, but it's not. It, if you're not used to that kind of thing happening from having engine seizures and two strokes, you, you might, that might have ruined my whole day. But anyway, what we did, we found out through Luciano's help that the little bleed hole that's in all master cylinders, front and back, had been clogged up. So what happens is as you push pressure into the brake, the brake, the pressure builds up. Then what happens, the back caliper starts getting hot as it gets hot, everything expands, that makes the caliper tighter, which builds more heat, and it's a death spiral. 
And at some point in time, if that happens to you, either the back wheel or the front wheel, and it can happen on any bike, by the way. That, that can happen to any bike, and it's actually happened to Tim on his front wheel. And I know Luciano knew exactly what it was. We rebuilt the, the rear master cylinder. And I said, mm, you know, the, I just was not happy with knowing that that might happen again. Uh, 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 and it was a 40-year-old cylinder, a 35-year-old. So what I did, I replaced it with the master cylinder, the rear master cylinder that belongs on an R6. Now, that was a great move because I can buy replacement parts. I can buy replacement cylinders that are not 40 years old. But the one thing it did, notice how long the brake lever is. It's a gigantic long brake lever. And of course, when they made the rear master cylinder for an RD, they took that into account. The R6 has a much shorter lever and the hydraulics, the ratios have changed. So what it means is my back brake is now like power brakes. And I'm used to dealing with it. And I do like the fact that I can just go, go down a motorcycle mall and buy a brand new one. Where with RD stuff, you're always buying rebuild kits and stuff. So because it was a safety thing, I thought it was well worth replacing that. But you, when you replace a master cylinder from a more modern bike on an old bike, a lot of times those ratios don't really work out to your favor. Now, what happened on the front of this, I had a different master cylinder at one time, and I don't remember what it was for, but, and then I decided not to do that because I didn't want to risk anything that would be out of ratio here, so I wound up keeping this. But now I found out, Luciano has told me, they make reproductions of these master cylinders. If this one were to ever go bad, it would be a simple thing. But I, I just don't like having 43-year-old you don't know how old the seals are and the parts and the rebuild kits and everything, but I like having all new stuff and I like having brand new brake lines. So that's the, that's the job today is to replace that front one. And that is a true story that I, I almost got whacked on Route 17. And, but it taught me about master cylinders. And I'll show this when I pull this apart. There is always a little pinhole in there. And when that pinhole does not the pressure builds up it's supposed to bleed back into the master cylinder and if that that hole gets clogged up with with 43 year old goop well you have an adventure of a lifetime now more than likely it wouldn't happen on a, on a bike 5 10 15 years old but when you start talking 30s and 40s i like to have new brake parts whenever possible so my plan of action every day i start off today Trying to plan out a useful use for the day. Looks like it's going to be a decent day. Actually, it probably would even be a riding day. But I have this on my list of stuff that I want to do. And today's the day I want to do it. It actually has to look like it might even turn into a riding day. But again, I really wanted to get this done today. And sometimes it just doesn't work out exactly how you want. But I want to get this done today. This will get a, this will get that brake line installed in in nothing flat, I'm sure. We're making homemade croutons today, my love. Wow! One of many things. One of many things. One of many things. Well, Karen's cooking. The zinnias are growing. Oh my God! Look at it. This one's probably two three inches high already. Wow! When you're growing one of these little pots for miles, he wants to take it and let it grow in his room and see every day some little progress because. These, these grow pretty fast. So Karen's busy, I'm busy, and it's time to get busier. I love this garage. I love to go out there on a day when it's not raining and work. Actually, it is, it, this could be a, a riding day, but we had ridden yesterday, and this was high on my priority list of things to do. So the first suggestion I can make is don't get any brake fluid on the paint. Cover everything up with an old towel. That's cheap insurance. Even though this, this is not supposed to be sloppy, it can get sloppy. Now, as I said before, there's a lot of ways, a lot of different ways to do this. It, and it's really, both of these have a, a, I think it's supposed to be a 28 degree bend. So I want to make sure I can go around this way. When, once that's in, yeah, it's going to be fine. I, I could, of course, go this way. I got to figure out how I want to wrap this because that's part of the reason I have this this issue here. So anyway, the first thing is, just pop this off. It's gonna make a mess with brake fluid and not much you can do about that. Thing you don't wanna do right now is squeeze the lever while this is loose so you just make a mess all over the shop. And 
I have brand new washers for this. Here we go. What a surprise. But when we're all done with this, of course, everything will get cleaned up with brake part cleaner and everything. Now, another thing I thought I'd mention, it's a funny thing, and Luciano was on board with this too. When we were all doing RDs, he had gotten some really inexpensive brake parts from, I'm assuming, from China. And he said, oh, try these, try these. And I put them on the bike. Of course, at that time, we were experimenting. We were changing things. And he had two of the RDs. I had this one. And every weekend, we would do an RD stuff. And I tried these brake parts. And I think they were balsa wood. I remember thinking the only brakes I ever had that were worse than these were the ones on the air coupe. And I think they were wood. But anyway, it's just not, be, it's besides the point. Another thing you never want to do, just, just things not to do, while we have a minute here to just chat, the things you never, ever want to do is measure things while the forks are compressed. Because then when you, when you over bump, the forks extend. So you always, you always want to be an inch on the good side here. So we're going to replace these washers. That's no problem. I've got most of this draining out into this. I'll clean this up. And we'll be ready to go. Uh, let's see how much it's going to come out. Now, sometimes I've had it that the, the thing just is, is explodes with because it's under some kind of pressure. Okay, so that's fine. I want to clean this up now. I want to get rid of as much of the brake fluid as I can. The whole trick with this, and I know it's just like, why do I change tires by cutting off the old tire? Well, you know what? I don't like scratch rims. I also, with, with this, I don't like old brake parts. I wish there was like a conversion kit. You could put R1 brakes on this bike. And it probably is for $1,200 or something. So I was watching a thing about somebody who had, had an R6. It's on YouTube. And put Brembo brakes in an upgraded, upgraded, upgraded. And by the time he was done, the brakes were $2,000 for the bike. And I said, hmm. I'm not sure on a $300 bike, that's what I would have. But now I can see by looking at this, yeah, that's worn pretty good. I'll show this on a close-up. But that's the whole reason for doing this. So now I want to go get brand new washers. I want to clean up the mess here. Go get some brand new washers and piece this all together and figure out, I guess it doesn't even matter on this, they put a, a rubber piece on both ends, so it'll go on either way. So I got my thing of brake part stuff here and over the years of course bleeding the brakes there's pumps now you can buy there's all kind of things I've even used the uh, what this is made for is to inseminate cows by the way and it works good as <laughs> if you if you're inclined to do that anyway what I'm looking for here and I saved all the brake parts this is some of the stuff Bob Navola and I we used to well I did it for him we did it together Put the brake things on. Here's what I wanted to show. These little rubber grommets that you put in certain places. This one, what's nice about these, the new brake lines, they come with that little rubber grommet already on them. That's nice, of course. So there's something I wanted to show here. Oh, we, we may have it. I always am inclined to put notes with things that I've used. I've had a lot of brake lines over the years. And I know if I look, look here we go. Oh, here we go. Here's this is what happens when you have an old RD and you buy a 40 year old part, a 30 year old part, whatever. It's just as bad as the one you're replacing with. And that's why I'd be inclined if I needed another master cylinder, I would have this is my information. I would try to avoid putting on a, a rebuild kit in as in lieu of just buying one of these, even if you buy one. Luciano's gotten them for $30, $40 on eBay. Um, Boy, oh boy, I have, I, didn't, I never realized I have this much stuff. I've got calipers and I've got everything. You notice, whatever I need is going to be on the bottom. Uh, here's a whole setup for another RD. But here's the point. Ha, ha, ha. I wanted to show this. See what that says? No bite. I think that lasted one ride. And I think this is balsa wood. But these are the no bite from China pucks. Now, obviously, while I'm doing this, I will check out the uh, how much material we have. Here, I've got a bunch of fittings. Oh, some new copper washers. Good. Okay, so I wanted the, the new copper washers more than anything else. In fact, here's a whole box. Of them. Okay, that's good, too. But I want to start. I want this to go as good as possible. 
and just to show people now they do make they do make pads for RDs that are that are centered and centered pads grab a little better but they eat the rotors up in time so I decided did not want centered because I don't I don't have I only have one spare rotor so and I don't want the time to drill those rotors you know you could be an old man by the time you're done drilling those rotors believe me that's not a fun job anyway we'll clip this all cleaned up we'll get our new washers and we're ready to go to work now if you just don't happen to have new washers you can take copper ones and anneal them that means just like an RD head gasket you can heat it cherry red just let it cool and they'll be soft again and then you can recompress them and the truth is I've used washers over but I don't sleep that good at night because I'm there here's the big thing that would be bad for me more than anybody I don't want to drop a brake fluid getting on my paint that would be the big factor that to me is very important just like scratching the rim so for people it's not important you got to decide you're one of the things I did I took took the anodizing off with the buffing wheel because actually having a red a red fitting doesn't do anything for me and I don't know why I didn't do that the first time I I would rather have just a shiny part Okay, so I have a brand new washer on both sides, and now I have to figure out the routing of this, since this is not a uh, an exact replacement. Actually, the one that was on there wasn't an exact replacement either. Now I want to be careful not to scratch anything here if I can. And I just want to make this hand tight until I route that cable. I, I'm not sure how that cable is going to route out until I'm done. Fishing it through by the headlight and everything. Now up at this end, when I loosen this fitting, it's gonna there's gonna drip some fluid out for sure. And I want to be able to just pull this one off, put this one back on, and get it hand tight, just a little more than hand tight, without getting any brake fluid down onto the motorcycle. Now it's always best just to get the old cable out of the way. Boy, I can see it's been it was rubbing more than I thought it was. But anyway, it's going to be done very soon. Now that I've got this one out of the way, and I can put this one up by the handlebars here, just to get it out of the way. Now I need to figure out how I want to route this. And notice this one has a spring. I'm not sure we're going to use the spring. The spring is there, so it doesn't do what this one did, is, is chafe on something up in that snaky thing where it has to go behind the headlight up into the speedometer. And of course, this is the, the brake light switch. And this, I'm sure, is tighter than it has to be. Now, getting this old line off and getting a new one on with the minimum amount of brake fluid dripping and drooling. We'll see if it's our lucky day. Now, again, we're going to use new washers. And I'm going to take this and make sure I've got the best possible routing for this before I uh, put a final tightening on everything and then bleed the brakes. And you can see the fluid coming out of there. Now, you don't want to right now, get rid of the old washers. I don't want to squeeze the lever. Don't bump your nose onto the lever. Or it's going to be a mess. Now, I tried to figure out the best routing for this. That I'm not chafing on anything, but I do have two of those rubber grommets and the spring to kind of keep this where it should be, if possible. Now, yeah, I'm going to make everything just hand tight, not super tight yet. So I want to make sure I've got the best possible the best possible routing for that cable as the next step. Well, the routing turned out to be relatively easy. And I'm not sure I need that spring. And that's kind of overkill. But I do have two of these rubber bushings to put any place that I think, if it is chafing down here, rubbing. And we'll, we'll find out if that's going to be the case. And this worked out okay. And I don't know if, again, I don't know if we need that, that spring. I guess we're going to figure that all out. But now I can tighten that up. And the next thing I can do is bleed the brakes. Now I've got this piece in my uh, collector items here. <laughs> Stuff I don't know if I'm going to use or not. It looks like this might be the part that belongs on the bike when you have stock hoses and everything. But I'm going to clean this up on a buffing wheel like I did to the, uh, the part that the, uh, the fitting. And see if I want to use this or if this is going to be appropriate. This, this will help route that line. And one thing good, and the line is plenty long. So, and I'm, I bought one an inch longer. So I really did overkill. And I already 
stretch the forks out as far as they'll go and we got plenty it doesn't turn into a violin string so that's good but i'm going to see now that bracket probably on a stock bike belongs right there i guess i could check it with the manual but oh, we'll see if it works either way now i looked at some of the pictures of the the stock bikes and they have totally different setups from from year to year and i guess this is p a part of wonder but i don't who the hell knows why now i don't know about this spring yet don't don't think that's going to be a necessary thing this seemed to be a perfect fit and it's got a keyway in the back so it locks in we have this brand new rubber piece that uh, i'm not sure if that's going to be exactly what we want but we have uh, i guess we can find out why not the easy way let's see if it if it doesn't i can use the original one Oh yeah, that pinches right down. Hey. Now, I don't know about the spring. This, I don't know. There's a, there's a thing up here that holds this. Oh, that's where, this is really gonna work out great, but I don't think we need the spring. I can take the spring off, just unwind it. But there's a clip up here that this rubber bushing here goes into. It almost looks like this line was made. Now, these are universal lines. It almost looks like this was made for this motorcycle. This totally has to be my lucky day. The rubber bushing that came with the line fits right in there. That one fits right in there. It's, I don't know. That could be a lot better. Wow. So the next thing, I'm just going to pull this spring off. You can just unwind it. And it takes a while. We'll get it off. I don't see any reason to have that spring on there. I really get the feeling this might have been our lucky day. I don't know. And just getting this spring... I just think we don't need it and I know some of the classic bikes they have these springs on the brake lines and one of the problems is they always rust and you keep polishing them and they keep rusting so maybe one less thing to polish that takes care of the spring this bushing just I, I'm not sure that belongs on a bike maybe it doesn't maybe it does I don't know but this the bushing up here was a perfect thing I had a wrap couple rolls of electric, a couple of wraps of electrical tape to make it a nice tight fit. And boy, plenty of flex in the line. I don't know how much luckier than that you can be. So it's a good idea when you fill this to try to, I loosened this up and made this as parallel as possible. You just can get more fluid in every time you, you pump the lever. And it just minimizes the chance we're going to spill some of this all over the place, which of course, one of my goals is not to spill brake fluid on the paint. And don't get any in the coffee. But anyway, this is the old school way. Just pump the lever and keep bleeding it down at the... This is a single brake, so it goes pretty quick. When you have double brakes, you always want to do the lowest one first. And then the highest one, because the air bubbles will always come to the, to the top. And if you have a spongy lever, it's always good to bleed it right at the fitting here. That's always one of the old old school tricks. So anyway, not like we're brake experts, but we, we have done some work. And, and thank you, Luciano, for all the help he's been over the years and giving me advice and giving me parts and whatever. Anyway, this has got to come off now. And I don't want to drip any paint. I can help. It's... There we go. Come on, baby. Don't be a drippy drooler. Now just to show, that's the little pinhole that if when when this pump goes past it, the, the plunger, little bubbles of air should come out of there. And when they don't, you're in big trouble. Well, this is what's supposed to you're supposed to use in a Yamaha dot 304. They the other fluids, especially the synthetic ones, there's, and, and I'm, again, I'm not an expert, but you're not supposed to mix them. So I go by what the manual says, dot three, dot four. It's best if you use it from a can that's never been opened or a, 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 in this case, a jug, because it's hydrous material. As soon as you open this up, the brake fluid starts absorbing moisture. So you don't want to expose the brake fluid to the air any longer than you have to, because it's those water molecules in the brake fluid that boil. And when they boil, the brakes So you can see what's happened is I've just, in just sitting here, that brake fluid that's in there has worked its way down the line, 
I haven't even opened the bottom yet, but it's just bleeding in and air is bleeding up. So if I'm patient, or well, it's, it's time for a coffee break soon anyway, I'll fill this up, let it sit. When I come back, that brake line will be almost full, and I'll just be less times I have to open the, the little valve at the bottom and bleed the air. Most of because air wants to rise, and it'll this will be the highest spot or this, whichever. Sometimes you have bikes with clip-ons where this is not the highest spot. The highest spot is here. So you always want to bleed from the highest spot. And you notice the new brake fluid is, is as clear as water. It's always a good idea to get rid of the old brake fluid anyway after so many years. And I know the manufacturers recommend every so many years to just get rid of the brake fluid. And they're probably right. Now you may, you may even see it on the video. That's already, I can see it going down. Little by little by little. So I see I've got no problem. I've got a bubble coming out of there already. And I was wrong. The bubble is coming out. The little overflow is underneath here. I thought it was that one. Shame on me. Now you can see the bubble coming up. So it's just going to take a few minutes. I just let this fill up the brake line. And I, while it's filling up, I'll go have a cup of coffee. So what is this while we're having a coffee break? Co scones? Scones, vanilla scones. Vanilla scones. Oh my god, how happy, how lucky can a boy be? All that and extra coffee, and while we're having coffee, that that brake system is self-bleeding. And that is such a good tip. Now after this coffee break, I will show you my way, and it's a very old school way of bleeding brakes. So this is the oldest of old school ways. Now I have the pump. That you can pump the fluid backwards and i have the thing with you it's, you know luciano gave me one that looked like a gun that worked okay but there's an old school way and this is the old school way and it worked perfectly today in fact i went out i filled this up and just let it drain down now what happens is the that little cylinder the wheel cylinder is already full so i don't have to refill that and what happens is you just loosen that fitting just enough that one drop comes out. As soon as you see one drop come out, you know it's not airtight, and the fluid will just go down. You come back from a coffee break. I had to fill this about three times before I went out for coffee because it was draining every two minutes. And now I come back from coffee, and I've got a rock hard lever. I mean that's that's as hard as, <laughs> and I've got all purposes no air coming out there anymore. Now I will bleed the bottom. I'll I'll crack the fitting. And squeeze the lever just to see if I do have any air but from feeling that break it feels as, it's as solid as a rock but and it's nice now if you have a helper that's great you, it's a lot easier than when you're doing this by yourself you turn into a, a, an octopus trying to close the valve and hold the lever and everything but anyway that is a real old-school way of bleeding brakes especially on one like this it worked perfectly today now but keep in mind it only works if that if the caliper is full and that when you're replacing a brake line usually you don't drain the caliper now just to mention a funny thing we did lauren's ducati monster in luciano's house the caliper is upside down on the bottom of the wheel and it, it was such a nightmare to bleed that thing i don't even i don't even remember how we did it but it was uh, all i can say is see the manual if your caliper is <laughs> underneath upside down See the, see the manual. Even Luciano was frustrated doing that. We were going crazy. Lauren, I hope you're still enjoying your bike, too. That was a nice Ducati Monster. So on an RD, the bleed fitting is in the back of the caliper. And I've got my little jug attached just to keep... I don't want to get on the rug. That's the only reason for that. I'm not trying to resalvage the fluid. I got the wrench on this side. And what I need to do is just verify that I don't have any air bubbles in there, and I don't think I do. A lot of times when you do this, you don't get one, you don't get a single air bubble out. All right, so a couple of pumps of the lever here. Lever feels rock hard. I'll loosen a fitting. Do this three or four times. I don't see any air in there at all. Oh, there goes a bubble. Oh, we did have a little air in there. I lied. Truth in advertising.
All right, so we have now all nice clean fluid in here. I'll top off, top off the master cylinder. And boy, that brake line worked out perfectly. Wow. Make sure this is tight now, of course. Make sure we're not scuffing or rubbing on anything. I, I don't think that could have worked out any better. $12. It's a $12 update. And for me, it's really cheap insurance. We got away with that other thing, scuffing and rubbing, and it wore through the plastic in spots. The, this is all now rubber mounted and little bushings and everything. This is a way better system. The little last thing here is just to top this off. Ah, we don't, don't even have to worry about it. Plenty in there. Okay, and then our little, the little rubber, and this, this is a critical part of this whole thing, making it work properly. Get that on there. The other little part that goes on. Okay, and of course, the easy part, putting the lid back on. And the screws and we're good to go. Now always the very last step is to take some brake part cleaner and make sure those rotors don't have grease on them or anything else. I do this on a regular basis actually every time I clean the bike. But there's just, and the reason is it's a simple thing. An RD does not have brakes like an R1. So if you get a couple of drops of oil or crap on these rotors, it's not in your favor, that's for sure. Anyway, they look pretty clean. Now, th this was a relatively simple thing to do. I tried to outline what the pitfalls were, some of the little things that they could ruin your whole day. And you know what? One of the things would ruin my whole day today is if it's beautiful like it is now and it was a little earlier, I would have gone out for a ride. But instead I picked what I think is going to be a good decision. Karen wanted to do some cleanup in the yard and get out in the fresh air here. We're sequestered. I, we, you know, that's, I'm, I did get to ride yesterday, but I'm looking at this bike. And now this is the evil twin project that this bike became. I didn't even have scheduled for, it's only because that 650 project can, got done about a month earlier. But I'm so glad that I got it done. There's still a couple little things to do. And to me, the, the whole evil twin concept, right now it's like I have a new bike that I've never had before. And Rob rode it, I rode it, and it's just fun to ride. I, you know, you can't explain to somebody, there's no way to explain it. it when you go through the gears, it just, it brings back memories of me being young. And that was a long time ago. And as I have to admit, that installation is about as factory looking as I could ever expect. I just, I don't know how you can make that better for $12. That is amazing. Now, don't forget, and, and for people that are so inclined, there are high-end brake line companies. I don't remember the name of them. I looked, they have, they have these lines in colors to match your bike. They have fittings, Kawasaki green fittings. and But you know what? If you want a good basic make, make the lever a little bit solider for $12, I don't think you can beat that. And we've already got one on the back here. We already have the same exact thing on the back. That was no, no big deal at all. But this one was not a good deal when I actually did it the first time. It lasted seven, eight years. Now I hope... To be honest, I hope it's perfect and it's going to last a lot longer. So I hope you enjoyed the video and picked up a few tips for putting in one of these brake lines. And I hope you like and enjoy working on old motorcycles as much as I do so. And thank you to the healthcare workers that are making our sequestration, which I hope is gonna end very soon if possible. And again, thank you for watching. Okay, so what is this now we're having tonight? Chicken korma. Chicken korma and what, naan? Naan. Oh, I love naan. Mm. The, the latest thing, Karen is making a gourmet meal every night just cause she loves me.